of uh, my presentation and start introducing the context in which uh, my work is set, uh, also presenting some tools that try to improve ontology understanding, that is the context, um, through um, the production of ontology documentation. Then I introduce my, my contribution here that is called Loads, the live out documentation environment. And then I present some results from user testing sessions we performed in the past few months and sketch out some conclusion and future works. Well, uh, le let me start, please, uh, on, on talking about interfaces and semantic web. Well, uh, actually, it uh, more or less seems to be a common point of view that uh, you know, uh, interfaces are uh, one of the crucial aspects to uh, make the semantic web technologies adopted by a broader audience. Uh, this is uh, well, more or less demo demonstrated by this kind of comments. But well, our point is that uh, we think that any strategy that guarantees the, the, the adoption of semantic web technologies uh, must address, should address at least, the need of, uh, you know, um, the need for improved human interaction with semantic models and in particular uh, data. Well, uh, actually, there are a lot uh, of future uh, of previous work on this topic. Uh, a lot of, you know, uh, ontology development editors were developed, uh, very good visualization and browsing tools, search engines, uh, semantic desktop application, and so on. Well, uh, however, um, the semantic web is a quite multidisciplinary field that you know involves a lot of people from different disciplines such as you know, publishers, legal experts, sociologists, philosophers and so on, not only computer scientists, that's the main point. And this person may be, you know, uh, have maybe be not very expert in uh, using semantic web te technologies, but they want to use these technologies for their work, that's the main point. Well, the, the main issue actually is, is that uh, we think that there are not so many tools that allow um, people that are not expert in semantic technologies in uh, dealing with uh, semantic data. Uh, let's just to make an example, please consider, for example, a publisher that want to you know expose their bibliographic its bibliographic data in the open link data and want to choose, for example, an ontology or develop an ontology. Uh, just to you know, model its domain and then publish the data. Well, the, the problem is that uh, are there an interface that allow this kind of users, the common users, let, let me say, to, to uh, use semantic web technologies? In particular, I will focus on uh, intera human interaction that people have with ontologies for this kind of context. Well, actually, uh, we, we identified uh, um, three different steps uh, that um, are fundamental with uh, when, when a person wants to interact with ontology. The first one is uh, that a person should understand the existing model. Just if I want to use an ontology for a particular to model a particular domain, I usually try to look if there are existing models that you know model the domain, and if those models doesn't exist or if they model the domain just for an aspect and not for the other. I, I would try to extend the existing model and uh, or develop uh, a new model to uh, um, appropriately uh, describe a particular domain, such as you know, the publishing domain, for example. And when I have a model uh, that can, I can use to model data, I, of course, want to add data according to that model, and I want to modify data according to that model. Well, uh, in today's talk, actually, I, I would like to uh, focus on uh, understanding ontologies. That's the, the topic of my talk. In particular, I would like to speak about ontology documentation because usually when you uh, start to uh, you know, um, understand an ontology, the first thing that you can do is to look at the human readable documentation of the ontology. Of course, um, for the ontology that are used in the linked data, there are a lot and very well written human documentation that you know try to uh, introduce the main concepts and uh, theoretical aspect uh, behind that ontology. But it, you can you know um, there there can be a lot of problems when you try to uh, um, understand or at least look for documentation 
for underdeveloped models. Since, you know, uh, usually the, the documentation is just released, is written, when an ontology became more or less stable. And if I have to write a new documentation every time, or just, you know, modify the old documentation every time, I change something in the ontology, I just, you know, get crazy. It's a very time-consuming task. And so, um, there are even a lot of ontologies that haven't any documentation. And so, I can, you know, try to open those ontology with an ontology editor, just to look uh, about the look axioms, annotation, using this specific tool. But the problem is that uh, uh, it could be a barrier for all these person that are not so expert in semantic technologies then have to you know, learn how to use a tool before understanding the ontology itself. Well, actually, another uh, possible solution is to try to use some tool that allows to generate a human readable documentation of the ontology starting from the ontological source. So uh, tools that use, for example, labels, comments, annotations, and you know, the logical structure of the ontology itself to generate a human readable documentation as, for example, HTML pages. Of course, there are a lot of applications that have been developed in, uh, in, um, for, this, for this purpose, and I list some of them here. Neologies, now Doc and Parrot maybe are the, the most famous one. And uh, well, my contribution actually um, goes in the same direction. I, I would like to, to introduce you a tool for the automatic uh, generation of ontology documentation that we called Load, Live All Documentation Environment, that is an online service that generates a human readable documentation of an owl ontologies or an RDF vocabularies, for example, that takes into account all the entities defined in the ontologies, such as classes, object properties, data properties, <coughs> and so on, annotations, swirl rules, general axioms, and namespace declaration. Actually, Load produced an HTML page uh, within, uh, with a lot of you know, uh, text there. That is um, that looks like a W33C uh, recommendation document. That's the main point, and uh, it's full of clickable links that allow you to easily browse within the documentation. It is uh, actually developed um, using XSD te technologies. Uh, it is open source, of course, and allows to generate documentation for uh, vocabularies and ontologies. Uh, stored in uh, RDF XML, Turtle, Manchester Syntax, and OWL XML. And of course, it is free of available online. You can try it, you can use it without any problem. It's just there. Well, le let me just introduce how load works, really works. Well, the, the idea is that the load takes as input an RDF XML file representing the ontology and then process that that XML file using an XSLT processor, and uh, according to a, an XSLT, uh, XSLT document, of course, and produce just the HTML page. So just to you know, uh, introduce some screenshot of the output of the process, I just go, went to that URL using my browser, and what, I pr what load produce is just that uh, HTML page that has at the beginning, uh, some information about ontologies, such as the creator, the date, uh, the IRI, the imported ontology, and so on. Then has you know, some introductionary text with a table of content that lists all the kinds of entities that are included in the ontology and in the documentation, of course. It is also possible to include uh, images in, uh, in the description, so as to have diagrams or whatever in the middle of the description of the ontology or of a, of a particular entity. And also, we have local table of content for each kinds of entities included in, uh, in the ontology, comments for each entity, and uh, all the logical axioms are rendered using the Manchester syntax just because it's, mm, I think, the, the easiest thing, syntax to, um, to be understood by common users. And, of course, there are even other local table of content for other kinds of entity, and also we you know, 
handle annotation, uh, annotation properties, suite of rules, and uh, the namespace of the ontology. This, this was just an example. Well, to use this service uh, is quite, quite, quite straightforward, I think. You just open the browser, put the URL of the, of the system there, then you can specify some optional, actually, slash separated parameters that I will introduce uh, in a few moments. And finally, the URL of the ontology you want to you know, convert as a documentation. Well, the optional parameters are just five. You um, can specify, for example, uh, the OWL API parameters that is very useful uh, when an ontology is stored in a format that is different from RDF XML. Uh, as, as I showed you before, um, the input document should be an RDF XML, but uh, what happens when uh, the ontology is stored in another format, such as Tartle? Okay? So to make, um, make, um, make the documentation using load with ontologies that are not in RDF, RDF XML, you should specify that parameter. What happens is just that you know, the first thing that load load does is to uh, process the source ontology using the OWL API so as to store uh, an RDF XML version of that ontology and then you know that particular string is given as input uh, to the XSLT processor and produce the HTML um, documentation of the ontology. Of course it is possible also to include uh, other um, other axioms that comes from the imported ontologies or from the you know, transitive closure of the ontology, but usually I always strongly recommend to use the all API one because uh, make, make, make sure that all the ontologies are uh, used to, you know, properly used to um, show the documentation. Of course, it is possible also to include the inferred axioms in the documentation by specifying the parameter reasoner. However, it's quite, you know, it's very time consuming. So if you have a big ontologist, I not suggest to use that parameter. And of course, oh sorry, uh, you can also um, specify the language in which uh, you want the documentation according to the annotation that are uh, defining the ontology, of course. These are just few examples uh, that you can run with your browser uh, that allow you to generate documentation for different ontologies with different parameters. Uh, of course, we developed also a, um, an interface, a web interface that allow you to um, use load with online ontologies, but also with uh, ontologies that you have stored in your file system. So you can just load a local ontology on your machine. And also when you want you don't want to use the reasoner because it's very time consuming. Actually, load implements a very small structural reasoner in XSLT so as to infer new axioms starting from what is really asserted in the ontology. Here there is an a very simple example in which we have a property has a test that is inverse of another property and this is asserted in the ontology and load is able, for example, to produce you know, the documentation for the, the, in the inverse property. So I have also the documentation for um, the is a test for property that is inverse of has a test. Well, so as to assess well, the usability of load and also well, the, the, the um, understandability of the documentation that, that load produce, we performed some uh, user testing sessions, actually. We involved 13 subjects that were semantic web experts to complete just five tasks. And all the tests were, were, were performed without any administrator that observed, usually observed the subjects while, while they tried to you know, do the tasks. And we use a medium-sized ontology called Fabio that has more or less 200 classes and 70 object properties and 40 data properties, just this. And well, actually, the user test session was um, organized as follows. First of all, we asked subject to compile just a questionnaire about their expertise in uh, ontology engineering, in OWL, and in ontology documentation. Then we ask um, subjects to run a sort of warm-up task to be confident with the system, with the load documentation, and we use the fourth ontology for this particular task. 
and then we ask uh, to, to complete the five tasks of the, you know, of the proper tests uh, using the documentation produced uh, out from the Fabio ontology. And finally, uh, we ask subjects to fill two different questionnaires, a SUS, uh, SUS, System Usability Scale questionnaire, and a, text, a free text uh, questionnaire, just to report their experience of using load to, to complete this task. And each subject, of course, use his computer okay, and his browser to, uh, to, to run this task, and no time uh, was taken about you know, the time uh, the user spent to complete the task. Well, we had 65 uh, tasks in total, uh, 58 of them were completely uh, completed suc successfully. Uh, we calculated you know, these values that are, uh, that are called system usability scale values that are just a, a value that try to uh, um, uh, record the perceived usability of the system from the perspective of a user. And it is calculated through you know, the answer that the, the users give to the first SUS questionnaire. And uh, actually, the, the results are quite good. Uh, the SUS value for load was 77.7. .7. That is uh, surpassing the, the, the threshold value to affirm that, to demonstrate a good level of usability. But also, we obtain very good values also for the SUS subscore that are usability. That is, you know, the, um, uh, how a user perceives the tool as usable and learnability, that is, how easy is, um, is that tool to be learned. Uh, of course, we also uh, collect some uh, textual, um, textual question, textual answers and textual suggest uh, suggestion by user that show some uh, drawbacks of load, for example, there, there, there is not implemented a search, um, a search function within the system, but they had to use the browser search function, and it was perceived as a missing feature, actually. But it uh, comes out that it was uh, uh, really, no, the, document, the, the documentation produced was really readable in, uh, in that sense. Well, actually, I, my presentation should finish here. However, because you know, uh, according to the paper contents at least. But however, I, uh, some review I was I have a lot of concerns about some comments that reviewer, reviewers made actually that were asking us for you know a qualitative comparison between load and other tools. And actually, I would like also to show you a relevant record of my concerns that you know w w which has a maybe a predict predictable end that is this movie. So, just to, you know, to try to manage these concerns, we try, <laughs> come on, we, we try to, to you know, we perform an, another user testing session, actually, in which in, we involve 18 different subjects with different expertise in semantic web technologies, and uh, we just split this subject in three different groups so as to use three different tools that produce automatically ontology documentation that are load, parrot, and ontology browser. And we just structured the test as before using the same ontologies, um, giving a bit more time for completing the task, but in particular recording, recording the time that each subject spent in, a, in, in perform the task. Um, and we obtained these results that, quite, that are still quite good actually, um, load seems to be the, uh, according to the SUS value, the much usable tool here, uh, even if uh, for what concerns learnability, Parrot seems to be better, but in terms of uh, the time spent in, in doing all these tasks, load has, it seems to have a, a quite good advantage uh, if compared with the other tool. Well, actually, if we 
uh, formally try to understand the statistical significance of all this value between the different tools. Um, the, uh, well, for, for cis values, the only stati st statistical significant value was the learnability between Parrot and, uh, and the ontology browser. And uh, about you know, the, 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 the t task and the time spent to do tasks, there are a very significant, significant uh, um, difference between load and part for task three, and again, uh, between load and part for the total time spent in doing tasks. So, concluding uh, this talk, I'm just introduce, uh, introduce our uh, tool to make ontology documentation out from ontologies. It is an automatic tool available online. We evaluated its usability and effectiveness through, uh, through different user testing that include also a quantitative comparison with other tools. And we plan, of course, to extend load, load with a lot of you know, uh, features, such as the search function uh, integrated with load, uh, st um, adding some statistics about entities, and this uh, adding a 3 display uh, visualization for classes, and so on. And of course, we also would like to conduct another user testing session to compare load, that is an ontology documentation environment, to other tools that were developed uh, just for browsing ontologies. That's just to see if load can be used also uh, as an effective tool to just browse ontologies without caring about the documentation. And most of all, uh, we are looking actually for particip participants for other experiments, so if you uh, would like to help us, please contact me. I'm here <laughs> for, for the rest of the conference. And any help is very appreciated. Great. Thank you. I think this is the end of my presentation. I would like to thank all the people that helped us in you know, the user testing session that were very, 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 very uh, amazing. Thank you.